It can be so frustrating when your little one has baby acne or eczema or things like that on their skin. It just breaks your heart. And so my little two month old has that going on right now and I have a homemade DIY recipe that you can use to treat your baby's acne, eczema, and cradle cap. I'm Kelsey from roughandtumblefarmhouse.com and every single week I share videos and content over on the blog about farming, family food, and fortitude here on our five acre homestead in northern Minnesota. So we didn't really have to deal with eczema or cradle cap too much with my first daughter, but with my second daughter, she's really had a lot of skin irritation. She's been very sensitive. I also do a lot of baby wearing, and I've noticed a lot when it's kind of her face on my chest that sometimes she'll have flare-ups then, I'm thinking, because she gets kind of sweaty sometimes. And so this is a recipe that I actually use for treating my other daughter's cheeks. She got frostbite on her cheeks when she was very little, or at least a little patch of frostbite, and so I'm very protective of her little cheeks when she goes out. It's actually a petroleum jelly recipe substitute that you can use to put on cheeks and their nose and their chin to help when it's really cold outside. And so I just put some of this on my daughter and it really seemed to make a difference. So it's actually kind of two recipes I'm gonna be sharing with you. The first recipe is just kind of the base recipe for that very basic petroleum jelly replacement, and it's just three ingredients. It's castor oil, beeswax, and vitamin E oil, and that really did a lot of help for my little two months old skin. But I wanted to kind of supercharge the recipe, make it even more beneficial, and so there's also an herbal version. And so if you're gonna be making the herbal version, you are also going to need some calendula blossoms, and you're also gonna need some chickweed, and make sure that they are both dried because when you're making oils and salves and things, you do not want to be using fresh herbs because the water in them can cause the oil in it to spoil a lot faster. To make the bare bones version of this cream, you are going to need 90 grams of castor oil. If you're going to be making the herbal version of it, you'll want 95 grams, 9 grams of beeswax, and 1 gram of vitamin E oil. Now if you're going to make the herbal version of this, you are also going to need a quarter cup of calendula blossoms and an eighth of a cup of sifted chickweed. You'll also need some containers to store it in when you're done making it, and you will also need a scale that can measure in grams, of course, to get all your ingredients weighed out. First things first, we are gonna infuse the oil with the herbs. Now you can do this the solar method, which works well. You can just go ahead and plop your herbs in a mason jar with your oil, stick it in a sunny place, shake it up, leave it for about two weeks. But if you're like me and you're just wanting to get this made, you can also make it on the stove very simply. So I'm using a double boiler here. If you don't have one, you can make one by just putting a bowl in the top of a pot to where it doesn't quite fit with water in the bottom of the pot and then turn on your burner until you have a nice rolling boil underneath and then that'll create a double burner in the bowl on top. So here I put the castor oil and then I'm going to add the herbs to it but before I do I'm going to bring it up to temperature now you don't want this to be any hotter than 110 degrees somewhere between 90 and 110 is the best so I recommend getting your temperature set before you put your herbs in because if you put the herbs in the oil at much hotter than that you're going to cook out the volatile oil so I'm going to get this up to temperature and then I will add in the herbs so first I've added the calendula blossom and I'm going to put in the sifted chickweed does not matter of course what order you put it in and then I'm just gonna give the whole thing a stir. And the reason why in this recipe you use more of the oil when you are doing the herbal version is that it's a pretty thick oil and so there's no way we're gonna get all of the oil off of these herbs. So that way it kind of accounts for the oil lost. So we're just gonna get everything nice and coated and we are gonna let this now sit on the double boiler for about a half hour to 60 minutes and then we'll just kind of gauge how the oil is looking if it's kind of a nice turned a bit of a green or yellow color then that means we're good to go so it's good to get this part of the project started kind of early because it can take a little bit of time so it took about an hour for the herbs to steep properly again you'll want to kind of turn a little bit of a golden color here i can show you it gets a little bit, well, you can't see it super well there, but you'll see when we strain it that it kind of colors the oil a little bit. And so I am just using a mason jar with some cheesecloth and this little strainer here, and I'm just gonna strain it on through.
So here you can see that it's kind of turned a nice pretty golden color. So we're just going to leave this set aside for a minute while we melt the beeswax. So here is the beeswax all melted. You want to make sure you melt beeswax in a double boiler. And then I have the, the infused castor oil here and it is still a little bit warm. You want to combine them when they're still warm. I'm just going to pour this in and just whisk as I do to help make sure that it incorporates nicely. And you can see because the castor oil is cooler than the beeswax, it starts to solidify already. So you really want to whip pretty quick. So you might have to do what I had to do, which my castor oil had cooled a little bit too much. And I popped the whole thing back on the double boiler just until you can still see a little bit of beeswax. It hasn't totally remelted back in, but just until it'll all come together because you do want it to be one smooth thing. So this will start to drop down to room temperature pretty quickly and you just want to make sure you keep stirring it every so often here. It doesn't need to be constant but almost and it's nice to have a little spatula here too to kind of wipe down the sides a little bit and once it's completely cooled it's going to be ready to go into jars but we still have a little time before it's completely cooled and solidified. So it starts to cool I'm going to add in about one gram of vitamin E oil. This just acts as a natural preservative and it also has skin softening properties as well. And once the whole thing is cooled, we're going to go ahead and put it into jars. I really like these little plastic ones. They're really sturdy. That way you can put this in your diaper bag or in your travel bag, wherever, so you can take this thing on the go. Now you may be wondering why I didn't include any essential oils in this. That is because essential oils really aren't recommended for kids under two, certainly not under a year, and this is going to be used for little babies typically that have skin issues. So I don't recommend using essential oils because they are so concentrated that they can cause adverse reactions in your littles. These are one ounce containers and I got two very full containers. So you'll get just a little over two ounces from this recipe and apply it to your baby's skin in the morning, afternoon, and night. It does go on a little bit goopy, I will say, but that's just because it's super moisturizing and has that castor oil in there. So just be aware of that with your clothes and things like that. It takes a little bit before it will absorb into their skin, uh, but after a couple of minutes, you won't even notice it. So a super simple recipe. Hopefully it helps your kiddo's skin. Make sure, of course, that you always do a small spot check on their skin to make sure they're not going to react adversely to it. Both chicory and calendula are herbs that are very, very gentle and mild and are often used for treating eczema and cradle cap and baby acne. It's very commonly used by herbalists. So these shouldn't have a negative effect on your kiddo, but you never know when they might have allergies. So it's always good to do a small check. And of course, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a dermatologist. So make sure that you are checking with your healthcare provider if you do have any concerns about your baby's skin. Thank you so much for watching. Always check back here every single week for more content about farming, family food, and fortitude here at our Rough and Tumble Farmhouse.